My name is Julie Flood and I'm the Global Director for Commodities at Cabby. As such, I oversee our projects on coffee, cocoa and cotton. And in one of our projects, we are improving cotton production in East Africa, where it is an important source of income for many smallholder farmers. Many rural farmers in both Kenya and Mozambique grow cotton as a cash crop, which has the potential to provide them with a route out of poverty. For a number of different reasons, such as low quality seeds, poor land preparation and inadequate pest control, yields are not what they should be. Some of the poor crop management is due to a lack of farmer knowledge and inadequate technical support. As a result, many farmers are moving away from cotton farming. Although much research has been carried out to date, so far few of the crop management techniques suggested by researchers are being adopted by farmers and full advantage has not been taken of the new seed varieties available. To remedy this, CABI and our national partners are implementing a project in Kenya and Mozambique which aims to increase smallholder income from cotton production. The Kenyan government has identified cotton as a key crop with the potential to benefit 8 million citizens in the country's drier regions. Mozambique's government has also recognised the value of the cotton industry and are keen to promote good practices and revitalise an industry that was severely impaired during their civil war. Along with some colleagues and partners, I visited one of the cotton project sites at Mivindini in the Kasanthwezi district of Kenya, where farmers will learn new techniques. The project is funded by the Common Fund for Commodities, or CFC, and the European Union, and is supervised by the International Cotton Advisory Committee. CABI's project manager is Dr. Daniel Karanja. This farmer field school was at the farm of Mr. Patrick Matumbi, the chairman and Mr. Julius Matumbi, secretary of the farmer field school. There are 36 farmers involved in this pilot field school and five other pilot field schools, making a total of 167 farmers involved in field schools in this district. Five other districts in the cotton growing regions of Kenya are engaged in similar farmer field schools as part of the project and it is hoped that some of the farmers from each group will become trainers in the next season thereby expanding the project. The farmers at Mavendini treated us to a welcome song and dance. The Farmer Field School facilitator, Mr J M Nagusu, showed us their trials where they had been adding manure and fertiliser. Land preparation, he said, was key. The farmers here had moved to the farm in 1956 and had not used fertiliser since, preferring to use what manure was available from their animals on their food crops. Efficient deep ploughing was also needed to break the hard layer which exists six inches below the surface. The farmers had already obtained 4 kg from their 10 by 10 metre plots where fertiliser and manure had been added. Compared to only 2 kgs from the control plot where they had done everything as they would do normally. I visited early in the cropping cycle and Mr Nagesu was confident of achieving the equivalent of 1,000 kgs per hectare in areas where the fertiliser had been added. At the end of the cropping season, it was good to hear that the yields had surpassed his expectations. Because, okay, from the office we gave them some seeds. Eh? Then I told them, before going to a place planting these seeds, let's try them in our farmer field school. And uh, in fact, I think one of the members was trying to challenge me that uh, she had harvested more than the plot here. 
after she went doing what we learned from me, then that was a credit. Mr Matumbi was keen to improve their productivity and said they wanted to extend their acreage. He said better cotton prices and improved productivity means that they can pay school fees for their children. In 1992, the cotton board of Kenya collapsed. Then the farmers were left without anybody to lead them or to, without a regulator to lead, to guide the, the industry. So it is only the other day, 2006, when the government came, uh, chipped in, they have assured us they are going to, to, to increase, not, not hectares, but they are going to, to go to GAP, good agricultural practices. So with the, the new price of 65 shillings, last year it used to be 20, uh, 32 shillings, now it has gone to 65 shillings. So with the 10 kilograms, that's 65th, you take to the school, you pay fees. So they, 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 they are willing. And of course, as an extension officer, you can talk about cotton confidently. Yes. Because you can convince the farmer with the gross mm. margins, of course. Yeah. But when it was 20 shillings, personally, I was a bit sad <laughs> to talk about cotton. <laughs> but now with the 65 shillings, of course, the gross margins are good. Next season, intercropping mung bean or green gram with cotton will be trialled. In other parts of Kenya, cotton is being grown as part of an irrigated cropping system. Our partners at the Kenyan Agricultural Research Institute are developing short maturing varieties, about four to five months, which could be intercropped with rice. The farmers asked about getting improved certified seeds. Some certified seeds could be available in two to three kg bags for the 2013 to 2014 planting. A minimum buying price has now been set in Kenya, so farmers here are much more optimistic about the future. With farm gate prices now the same as recommended prices, farmers feel much more encouraged about planting cotton.